We drink urine. Hello, Adventurers. I grew up in Indonesia, but I've been living in Singapore for the past 15 years. I've also been fortunate enough to visit at least 18 other countries. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what's normal in Singapore, but not in your country. Let's begin. We love mass-produced public housing. Some of them can even compete with private condominiums on both aesthetic and price. I think Singapore has one of the highest rates of citizens who owns homes in the country. We have a government body called the Housing and Development Board. In short, HDB, their job is to build more affordable housing for residents. For us Singaporeans, actually this is the most affordable options for housing and they are actually of a very good quality. A lot of the estates actually come with public facilities such as badminton court, very nice park. There are even public exercise areas with machines and playgrounds for your children. I think even adults will have a lot of fun here. Looks like I can't use the slide. Many of them also have community gardens where residents can come together in a shared plot of land and garden together. For this housing estate, there's a supermarket at the ground level that also conveniently will be able to serve all the other surrounding areas. And it's not just supermarket, you can also find dentist, family clinic, a salon, a laundromat, and over there is a food center. And it always comes with parking facilities as well. So more often than not, you just need to go down to level one, walk a little bit, and then you'll find everything that you need. That's why I think public housing in Singapore is a very good deal. Singapore has super weird, but publicly accepted way to reserve seats at dining establishments, especially the hawker centers. Locally known as Choke. When they get to the hawker centers, they'll first find an empty seat, then they'll leave an item on the table to choke it. After securing their seat, then they'll go out and buy their food. That's why if you go to the hawker centers, you'll often find tables sprawling with things, but there's no one sitting there. It's perfectly normal. So if you're visiting, you can also choke your own table, but don't use overly expensive items. I've seen people using their phone and wallet to choke, but I really don't recommend. Although Singapore is safe, it's best not to tempt the devil. Just using a simple water bottle would do. In Singapore, we drink urine. Singapore lack natural resources, including one of the most essential. So, on top of capturing local rainwater, importing water from our neighbour Malaysia, and the desalination of seawater, we also do water reclamation. Honestly, it's just a nicer word for recycling. We collect our toilet water, process them, so that we can drink them again. This is called the new water. In short, you know, water goes in, water goes out, then water goes back in. So I trust that the processes are thorough enough such that the drinking water is, you know, water. But the stigma of drinking your own toilet water was still pretty strong, especially when the new water first came out. Anyway, any water that you drink today was probably somebody else's pee 1,000 times over before. Water is water. In Singapore, it's perfectly normal to walk in the middle of the night alone without fearing for your life. In fact, I think that it's so insanely safe here that native-born Singaporeans have lost their sense of danger. Look, even the local supermarkets just use the public area to store their inventory. In other places, I think this would have been robbed. Everywhere here is accessible to the public. As someone who was born and raised in Indonesia, it's unthinkable for me to leave my valuables without anyone watching over it. For example, in public coffee shops like Starbucks, I would see people leave their laptops and bags unattended when they go to the toilet. I mean, you saw how someone used their phone to chop a table at a hawker center. I feel that it's a combination of several factors. For example, number one, Singapore has a very effective police force. From what I've observed, there are plenty of police patrols and there are decent surveillance around the public areas. Those are definitely a deterrent to crime. When to be criminals see police around and security cameras on top of their heads, I think they'll think twice. Number two, Singapore is quite prosperous and there are a lot of opportunities for people who live and work here. 
So a lot of times, there are better things to do than to commit a crime to get what you want. I don't really know how to explain it, but it's really so safe that even if you lose your wallet or your phone, you'll probably get it back. Number three, I think culturally in Singapore, people also don't like to bother other people. It's the, I don't bother you, you don't bother me, that mentality. So one time, I actually lost my student ID when I was in the airport flying out of Singapore. Fortunately, somebody found it and took all the trouble to track me down to my gate and return it to me. To him, my student ID worth nothing. If he had just left it on the floor where he had found it, it wouldn't have costed him anything. But he did what he did. And I was so grateful because without that student ID, I wouldn't be able to come back to Singapore. Wanna hear something really insane, but perfectly normal in Singapore? For me to get a car in Singapore, I'll need to pay at least six figures in Singapore dollars. This is due to the COE system that puts a quota on how many cars can be purchased per month. Anyone who wants to buy a car will need to bid for a certificate of entitlement. There's only so many certificates per month and there's a lot of people who wants to have a car. That's why the prices are so high. But people don't actually mind the high prices of car ownership because... It's fast, it's mostly reliable, it's nice, it's clean, comes every few minutes and they are very simple to navigate. Which is why almost 60% of the population takes public transport to get to work. I have never seen a train system that is as efficient and easily understandable as the Singapore MRT. I can easily go anywhere in Singapore with the buses and train system. Then, if you want to travel from the extreme ends of the country, it only costs you this much. This actually works out really well for Singapore because with efficient public transportation and less cars on the road, the traffic jams are not that severe in Singapore. It really is the best public transportation system that I've ever used. Do you see it? Escalator, trash can. In Singapore, it's normal to find trash cans everywhere. Just like how we have one over here. And look, there's another trash can there. And can you believe it? Just across the road, there's another two trash cans. Oh my god! <laughs> There's one trash can in every corner of this road crossing. Yeah, there's one more over there. <laughs> so the pattern that I observe is that every time there is a bus stop, there's an escalator, there's an entrance or exit to a shopping mall, there's always a trash can. And I think it's a good thing to have trash cans everywhere. It's also the reason why Singapore is so clean. Look, there's no trash on the street. I've been to a few countries. I think it was South Korea. I bought some street food and have some trash at hand. And I was wondering, where are all the trash cans? Where do I throw my trash, man? So when I look around, wow, there are a lot of litters on the floor. I can feel for the people who litter. They probably think like, wow, there are no trash cans and I don't want to carry my trash around. So that's what I did. I held onto my trash for almost like one hour. Okay, I don't condone littering, but I feel that if a city can make it so easy for people to not litter, uh, it's a plus. Since we're talking about trash, I also have to point out how normal it is to be clean in Singapore. Now, I'm not just talking about the clean streets or the pristine waterways. I'm also talking about how spotless our public servants are. They are not entirely spotless, but they are clean enough to put Singapore in the top five least corrupted countries for at least the past 20 years. You know, our most recent major case is about a senior minister who was charged with 27 counts of corruption, amounting to $384,000. Like, what an amount, right? And I actually looked it up. The highest amount in Singapore was back in 1995, 13.85 million. You know, in other countries, it will be hundreds of millions. But in Singapore, 13.85. By the way, to be clear, I don't support corruption. I'm just weirdly celebrating how puny our corruption cases are. And so a uh, big shout out and thanks to our public servants. Thank you for your service, Majula Singapura. But don't take my word for it. Come and check us out yourself. How about let me take you on a day tour here. I'll see you there. Hmm. Should have used this for the f Just kidding. <laughs>